Archie, Harrison, Mountbatten, Windsor, and Lilibet Diana. Where are you? That's what so many people wonder. So many people question whether or not these children actually exist. And I'm gonna to explain to you some of the reasons why that is and why Harry and Meghan have kind of created this really weird veil of secrecy around their children. Hello guys, my name is Brittany. Welcome to Royal News Network. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to royals. So that's news, gossip, fashion, jewelry, television shows, movies, and history. We do it all right here. So if you wanna hit that subscribe button, that would be fantastic. And like I said, today we are talking about Archie and Lily, the strange case of the very much missing Sussex children. So yes, they are just, I mean, we hardly ever see them and it's just weird. Now, just kind of taking a step back here wondering, because a lot of people will say, well, Harry and Meghan have been very clear. They want their children to leave private lives. I completely understand that. However, Harry and Meghan do about everything when it comes to this kind of wrong. So just to start off with, Harry and Meghan, when Meghan was pregnant, they made this very public announcement that they would not let anybody know any of the details of Archie's birth, basically, and that they wouldn't share, you know, where he was born, you know, any of his godparents, anything like that. And if you haven't watched Royals at all, or if you're not that familiar with it, you might kind of go, well, you know, he is just seventh in line for the throne. That's, you know, that's fine. And hey, you know, I don't want to know any details about, you know, uh, August's birth or Sienna's birth. So those are, you know, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie's children. I don't really, you know, I'm not that big into knowing who who, you know, where the details are surrounding their births. But here's the thing, Harry and Meghan at this point were still being supported by the taxpayer. And if you are on the taxpayer's dime as a royal, there's kind of a quid pro quo. Because you know what? People want to celebrate the birth of your children. They are very interested in it. It's a continuation of the monarchy, of the dynasty. You know, it's kind of one of those things where, yes, maybe necessarily you don't want to walk out a couple hours after giving birth all done up and displaying your child to the rest of the world, but it is actually a way, a very unique and interesting way of really kind of connecting the public to your children. And a lot of royals do do this, not all of them, but a lot of them do kind of do kind of this, a bit of this display in part because they want the public since birth to really connect with their children. Their children will be a part of the public's life you know, for basically their entire lives. So there's very much this dynamic and this investment in these children. But Harry and Meghan were like, no, 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 no. He's gonna be a private citizen. He's gonna be a private citizen. And while that was true, his lifestyle, his life was essentially being funded by the taxpayers. The the guards that's accompanying Meghan to the hospital, they were on the taxpayers' dime. The hospital staff were being paid for by the Duchy of Cornwall essentially taxpayer money just from the Duchy of Cornwall, not from, you know, and the Duchy businesses, not, you know, from, you know, basically the whole country. But anything, any person connected with that birth who was part of the palace system essentially is on the taxpayer's dime. And the renovations for their home, Frogmore, where Archie would live, was a part of the tax, was taxpayer funded as well. So it was very you know, quite actually important for Harry and Meghan to involve the public in the birth of their children. But they're like, no, 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 no. And in fact, Tom Bauer's book did kind of an interesting analysis of this. And I don't know if I caught this before because I knew that Harry and Meghan kind of actually embarrassed the British press by saying that Meghan was in liber in labor hours after she had already given birth. She had given birth early in the morning. They released the news you know, kind of late in the afternoon to hit the American airwaves, by the way. And then once they were told they were in labor, Meghan and Harry jumped the gun from Buckingham Palace and everybody else by announcing that she had already given birth and that it was a boy. This was just incredibly unprofessional, kind of tacky, and really made the British press, you know, who already weren't real keen on Harry and Meghan, kind of like, are you joking with me now? You know, you just kind of made us look foolish. Here we are reporting your labor, but you gave birth eight hours ago. So it already came, it already became quite a contentious kind of thing. And then it just kind of got worse from there. You know, Megan and Harry came out with their Archie and would not let really anybody get a good picture of him. And this actually came out in the Tom Bauer book as well, is that apparently Megan was working with CBS and Gail King to kind of create this documentary about herself and Archie and her the first year of her marriage. And so, you know, part of concealing him was, I think, to kind of sell his image. But part of the reason they've decided they want to keep their kids private is to avoid people exploiting their kids. So it just didn't make 
any sense. And then they had the christening, obviously, as well. And, you know, Megan wore Dior, which probably, you know, was a $10,000, you know, christening outfit for herself. And, you know, we weren't told anything about who, you know, his godparents were. And again, this little guy, you know, he's being protected by the taxpayers. He's living in a taxpayer funded home. His parents are wearing taxpayer funded clothes. So why in the world were they unable, why was it so necessary for them to conceal their kids? And that concealment has only gotten worse as time has gone on. You know, we've hardly seen Archie for well over a year. And we saw him recently, some popper, well, it's kind of pictures from the public or perhaps somebody, you know, authorized by Harry and Meghan to take pictures from behind of Archie to sell for, you know, while they were in Wyoming. We just got a picture of Lilibet, our first picture of her, just two pictures of her for her first birthday. And so there's very been very much this concealment around their kids. And, you know, again, you kind of understand they're asking for privacy. However, there's a lot of problems with this. Number one, Megan made it very clear in her interview with Oprah Winfrey that she wants her children to be a prince and princess one day. You know, she could have given them better names than Archie and Lilibet, but hey, you know, not my kids. But because she wants this, Unfortunately, she and Harry have made the very stupid mistake of not connecting their kids with the British people. The British people are not connected to their children. When I was in the UK, I was actually in the UK kind of the evening that the picture of Lilibet was released. And I remember seeing it and I was like, oh, you know, she, you know, she's cute, nothing wrong with that. But then it was like when I went to the airport and I actually saw these kind of bins with newspapers, the Sun, I think it was the Sun that had the exclusive. And honestly, it didn't seem to be selling any better than any anything else. It was actually some of the, the columns were lower and the sun seemed even with another issue. So I was like, well, clearly it's not that big a deal. People aren't that invested in it. Nobody's like clamoring to get this issue with Lilibet. And so you just got to wonder why people aren't that invested in it. And I think, again, Harry and Meghan have made the catastrophic mistake of telling the public that they want their children to have titles, yet not letting the public see their children. Yes, when Charles becomes king, Archie and Lily will be kind of naturally become a prince and princess. However, the letters of patent can always be amended to exclude them and or to make it to where, you know, for children to get the titles, this would be my suggestion to the British monarchy. And I've actually done a whole video on this, that my suggestion is that they stipulate in the letters of patent, only children who live in the UK can get those titles. Because I think it's silly to have a Prince Archie and a Prince Princess Lilibet running around Montecito having barely spent any time in the UK at all. That's just silly. So very much if Harry and Meghan want to advocate for that, unfortunately, I don't think there's a ton of public support on their side. And if they had introduced their children more to the public earlier, I think they'd have a lot more support when it comes to that area. The other thing I think reason why they've concealed their children is that they want to do this because they want to monetize off the kids. So, you know, when it comes to CBS and Archie's birth, clearly Megan was collaborating with CBS, according to Tom Bauer, to actually kind of monetize Archie and pictures of him. And, you know, I could see it for, they have a upcoming documentary reality TV series. I should always call it reality TV series, not a documentary. And it's entirely entirely possible that featuring the kids on there will be a huge part of it. And again, it's just selling their kids to get attention. And it's a way too of them just basically advertising for the show going, hey, you've never seen Archie or Lily. Here's what they're like at home. Here are Harry and Meghan as parents. Because they don't really have anything else to sell Harry and Meghan. They do have their kids. But honestly, are people that invested anymore in their children? No, not really, because again, we haven't even seen them that much. People generally even question if they exist. That's how badly Harry and Meghan have botched the situation. They made it so difficult for people to see their kids that people question whether or not they exist and whether or not they've ever existed, or if they were born via surrogacy or anything like that. Now, my opinion on this is I've done a whole video on this. I think Megan really had her kids uh, because she clearly gained a decent amount of weight doing it and struggled to lose it. That is not shame. That has actually helped convince me that she actually had her kids is how much weight she gained. And that's not to say, obviously, women gain weight when they're pregnant. That's totally natural, totally fine. Some women struggle to lose it more than others. Hey, I am not shaming her at all in that respect. 
But I just did find it kind of interesting because I don't think as a narcissist, I don't think she could stand to gain all the weight and then gain weight just to sell that she was pregnant and struggle to lose it. I don't think, I think that would drive her nuts. I was actually really surprised it took her that long to lose it because I really thought, you know, she is somebody who is that obsessed with her appearance. This is just my impression. I don't know this for sure. So obsessed with herself that I didn't think she could stand the fact that she wasn't stick skinny. And I actually wondered, this was kind of interesting that because she had that Wimbledon event and she had her two friends from college there. And most of both of those ladies, again, no shame, are noticeably heavier than Jessica Mulroney. And so I wonder sometimes it was easier for Megan to actually distance herself from Jessica Mulroney because Jessica Mulroney is unbelievably fit. That woman works out a ton. She looks fantastic. I actually love her trainer. She looks great. She looks actually fantastic. So I really do admire her for that because my weight has yo-yoed a bit. So anyways, but you know, I think Megan struggled probably with the fact that Jessica looks so fit and Catherine looks so great and she really struggled after having her children. And again, no shame, that is what it is. But the kind of the bigger mistake I think Harry and Megan have made throughout this, and it's like been a ton. I mean, they are like the walking train wreck of what not to do as a royal, really. What they've done, I think, that's been really, really poor for them is that they've made such a big deal about themselves being parents, yet we never see them parent. So it's hard for me to connect with you as a parent and see you as a parent when I never see you with your children. I think that to me is a massive, massive mistake because what do Harry and Meghan do all the time? They tell us about their kids. They tell us our kid, you know, Archie likes waffles. They tell us, you know, all these details about their kids, you know, Archie's first word and all these sorts of things. Yet we never see them interact with their children. They could have brought their children to the polo games in Santa Barbara, a lot of the other Couples and families did that. No, so we just saw Harry and Meghan as if they were still dating. And then the other thing is that Meghan, when she was at the Invictus Games, she had the, she went to this book reading event. Supposedly she was supposed to read her book and then she didn't end up, didn't end up reading her book because her book is terrible. And so some other guy read his book and she's like playing with the kids and trying, you know, it's obviously to be seen as maternal, but it's like, it's a really, really hard to see you as maternal when I haven't seen you interact with your own children. What really, you know, kind of re changed my mind when it comes to, to Kate, cause I actually wasn't a Kate fan for a long time is seeing her interact with her kids at a polo game in 2018. This was not too long after Harry and Meghan had gotten married. She had had Louis. She brought George and Charlotte to this polo game. And oh my gosh, that woman is that those kids mother. The nanny is not raising them. She is, she and William are William as well. He is very hands-on with his children and they ha are hands-on with him. Those kids interact with their parents and clearly spend a lot of time with them. So they're not being raised by nannies. And so I actually had a lot of respect for Catherine because clearly, you know, a lot of times really wealthy people, oftentimes they leave kind of the child rearing to actually their nannies and they go, well, I'm checking out, you know, this is getting too hard here, you deal with it. And the nanny is the one disciplining the kids. I think Catherine is the one who does, you know, the disciplining and so does William. They are very, very hands on. And that's very, very clear. Catherine, the kids were hanging all over her. They were having fun with her. They were interacting with her at this polo event. In a way, I've never seen Megan with her children. The only time, you know, besides the South Africa tour that we really saw Megan with her kids there were a couple of times. One was at a polo match where Catherine again looked very natural with her children, very engaged with her children, especially her baby Louie. And Megan was just holding Archie like this. And he just didn't seem to be dressed well. And he, you know, he's in just this little onesie and she's in literally a tent. It's ugly ugly dress and she didn't interact with Catherine or her children at all and then we go to you know his first sorry and then we go to the paparazzi pictures that we saw of Megan walking Archie I mean a lot of people have questioned whether or not that was a baby in her harness I can't say one way or the other but he is like half falling out and she's grinning at the camera and so it's like okay, you know, your child's, you know, half his butt cheek is out of this harness and he's hanging half over and you're just grinning at the camera, clearly like directly at the camera. Like she knew the camera was there, even though she wanted to see it. It's like, you're, honey, you're looking at the camera. We can all see you looking directly at the camera while your kid is half off. And the other time we saw her kind of more interact and you know, that was just pictures. We just saw the pictures at the polo game, kind of the next almost video we saw. And I think this is the last one we've seen of her was, you know, reading a book to Archie for his first birthday. And what always bugged me about this video immensely is I know she was trying to go for California 
casual. But honestly, I mean, I know Archie had a little onesie on, but to me, it looked like he was kind of in his like pajamas or almost underwear in a way because it was very flimsy. Like, you know, I know she's going for California cool, but could you not actually dress your child? Your child looks like, you know, this is what you, you know, he slept in the night before. Like put him in some actual clothes because otherwise it just looked like literally like he was in his PJs or kind of almost in his underwear. And it's like, and you know, a lot of people have mentioned, and I can't say this for sure, that looked like his diaper might have been full. She looked at times kind of irritated that he kept dropping the book and wasn't clearly responding to the book at all because she's playing to the camera. The baby's like, well, I don't understand the difference between the duck and the rabbit. It doesn't mean anything to me at this point as a baby. And so she just looked kind of silly. I mean, the end is very cute. I'll give it that. And I'm not saying that Megan doesn't love her children, but most of the interactions we've seen with her and the kids have been kind of awkward and we don't have enough there to go on to, to kind of, I think, connect in the same way I do with Catherine when I see Catherine being a mother. So it's just, again, this, and we have hardly ever seen Harry interact with his own children. Really, we haven't seen him interact with his own kids at all, really, if you think about it. We saw him very briefly in South Africa. He was holding the baby when they debuted Archie, but really we haven't seen him, you know, be kind of a father and see the kids kind of hang on to him. So it's like, he's trying, again, he wore this shirt that said, girl, dad, he's trying to portray himself as this father figure, but it's like, but I haven't seen you with your own children. I, I'm having a tough time connecting with you and fatherhood because I don't even see you with your kids. And Harry and Meghan, a huge part of their branding, I think in their head is that they are these incredible parents. Well, I have to actually see you parenting to make that part of your brand strategy work. So why are Harry and Meghan, again, why are they doing this? Well, I think a huge part of it, again, is that they know the kids can be commoditized. So I think they're hiding their kids in part to make some sort of grand debut later. And I think that a huge part of it will be their reality documentary series. Um, so, but I could be totally wrong, but I see that. And, you know, honestly, I think it was just kind of an F you to the British public and the rest of the public for not following Megan's explicit party line and going on with her every demand is to hide the kids. But like so many things Harry and Meghan do, I think it's backfired on them quite a bit because again, I don't think people are connected with their kids. And if you're gonna advocate when Charles is king and he's considering going, you know what? These two kids are in Montecito. I don't see them. Harry and Meghan are loose cannons and I don't really need kids eventually falling out of a nightclub in LA, you know, maybe doing, not that, not that Archie and Lily are gonna do this, but just as an example, you know, what if they become kind of the, the poster child that we see oftentimes of, you know, kids in LA who are the children of famous parents who often have issues with alcohol and drugs. What if we see that happen to Archie and Lily and they're going around calling themselves Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet of the United Kingdom and everybody's like, well, you've hardly stepped foot there. Why are you calling yourself that? And then, you know, they're doing things that kind of bring bad attention to the monarchy, it will be very, very easy to strip them of their titles. So honestly, they don't really need it if they're hardly or ever gonna spend time in Los Angeles. But if Harry and Meghan had made much more of a concerted effort to connect their children with the British people, if Charles or William went that route, there might be outrage. I think now if they did it, there would be relief. And that is, again, a huge blunder that Harry and Meghan have made because nothing is set in stone. This is the thing, everything can change. The letters of patent are not a golden rule that can never be adjusted. And honestly, I think it needs to be adjusted. And I think this is a great way to go to say, take a couple back and steps back and go, you know what, it just doesn't really make sense for these kids who have hardly spent any time in the United Kingdom to have titles representing the United Kingdom. And I think that'll be incredibly hard for Charles not so much for William, but incredibly hard for Charles. But again, I think the way they can get around this is by simply by saying, you know what, you actually need to live in the United Kingdom in order for this to apply. And I think that can be done very effectively. Well, anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Do you think the kids exist or not? I know this is a weird question that people even question that is huge. But again, I think that is entirely Harry and Meghan's own Frankenstein monster that they created. And you know what? They could have totally avoided it if they done things so differently. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.